اهلا وسهلا فيكم <تصفيق> عن جد You're most welcome at Dalul Art Foundation. I really need to mention that late Dr. Ramzi Dalul, whom I had the honor to meet, was the founder, I mean, of this collection as a collection. Him and also his late wife, uh, Saida Al Husseini. And this is how the whole collection and the acquisition of artwork started as early as the 1970s. Dr. Basil Dalul tells us a lot how he was raised in a house where they are always surrounded with artworks and cultural uh, subjects and themes that were spoken at, at, at their place. So Basil de Lul, uh, in 2016, took on the mission of creating this institution, let's say, which is the Dalul Art Foundation. Instead of only having a collection that is stacked at someone's place, he did institutionalize this collection and safeguarded it. We started uh, archiving it, documenting it, digging into the information behind the artists, the artworks, etc. And we uh, launched the uh, website in 2020 during Corona. And this is how everything became uh, accessible to the public. Now, the fact that I mentioned that we have around 3,000 pieces at DAF, it just happened that we realized while we were documenting and archiving and categorizing those works, we realized that we have 477 artworks within our collection, which are untitled. Now, this might sound as not a problem at all, but it did present a challenge, by the way, when we were tracking those works, documenting them, archiving them. Like, I'll show you when you're done three artworks behind me in that room for Khaled Khres. The three are similar. The three are created in 2011, and the three are called Untitled. And I would tell, let's say, that the handler, give me the Khaled Khres 2011, okay? That is abstract, that is pointed. He wouldn't know which one. Anyways, it is, we really uh, face this problem, but it's not as simple as that. We asked ourselves, is a title that much of an important element in, for an artwork, I mean? What is the role of a title? And to what extent the lack of a title plays a role in our understanding or interpretation of an artwork. So we decided to come up with a series of exhibitions, the umbrella name of which is Untitled 077. Yeah, and we posted an ad at Selections Magazine. And we decided to curate 77 artworks within each event. The challenge is double the fact that we're dealing with artworks that have no name first, second, those works, we were discussing, Dr. Rico and I, that those works have nothing of our familiar visual lexicon. You're, you're really looking into formal elements, and you are to kind of give meaning to that work. And it's quite common that abstract artists avoid naming their works. They'd rather keep, or let's say, uh, 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 give space to the viewer to devise an interpretation themselves. Before we start, let me introduce Dr. Rico. Dr. Rico Francis is a former director of the art galleries at AUB, and he is currently a professor at the Bombay Institute for Critical Art and Analysis. Critical analysis critical, and research, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, critical analysis and research, I'm sorry. Yeah, the funny thing yeah. is that I took a course with them three, four times, <laughs> but I remember it as BCAR, okay? Yeah, a... And, uh, the objective of us inviting Dr. Rico to have those four sessions, the first one is the one we're uh, gathered in, is to reach an understanding of the visual language of abstract art. We selected a couple of works which are around us, and now Dr. Rico will lead the, the talk. And I urge you to participate, because without your participation, the whole exercise wouldn't really I mean, makes okay. sense, because uh, I've taken a course with Dr. Rico, and his, his pedagogical uh, approach is more of a participatory one, an interactive one, okay? It's not like someone sitting here and giving you a presentation or a historical course. Okay. Okay. You, Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, it's a pleasure to see everybody here. It really is. Thank you so much for coming. It's a special pleasure to see people who I know and some of my former students. It, that, that's, that really is a pleasure because it's been several years since I taught in Beirut. And to have this idea that you, know, you teach a class and then people are 
they stay in the field, right? It's not like they're doing it to, you know, as a background for something else, but to stay in the field. That's just wonderful, absolutely fantastic. So uh, a real pleasure to see. Um, so let me just um, fill you in a little bit on my technique and what we're going to be doing, right? So I, I start off, everything I teach, I start off, I assume you know nothing. Okay, forgive me, I assume you know nothing. And in fact, I'm gonna make a special request, which is if you know something, forget it, please, right now. You can remember it when you leave, but until you leave, forget it. My students will have heard me say this before, right? So I want you, I need you not to know, you'll see why in a second. Um, it's totally interactive, right? In the sense that it's, you know, I, it sounds like I'm standing here giving a lecture, but it's not really, and you'll see how this works. And I'm assuming my students will remember that as well. Um, but I will say, if I say something, if I ask something, and you know, don't answer, okay? You can only answer if you don't know. That's also part of the premise of what we're doing here. So I, I conceive of this from this notion of we all know nothing. We all know nothing in the first place, and then in the second place, um, abstract art is so difficult. For, for, and I'm, I'm really amazed, you know, in all the years that I've been teaching, people who actually know quite a lot about art still have a general sense of abstract art, but aren't really specific in terms of what they're looking at, or in terms of what they're reading. So part of this is how do you, how do you in a sense, treat a picture as a book, in, in a way. And my premise is you need to read a picture just like you need to read a book. And it's not something like, you know, it's, it's a bit like saying when people just look, walk into a gallery or walk into a museum and look at a picture, um, and then they just look at it and turn around and walk away, that's a little bit like waving a book in front of your eyes and saying, oh, isn't it a nice book? Thank you, and then turning around. Like you have to read it. You have to get inside it. So that's part of what this is about. Um, it's that very slow, meticulous process of getting into the image. And um, once we get going, you'll actually see it's not that difficult, but it needs some working in to make yourself slow down and start thinking about what, what the image is. So this is an introduction to these images. Some of you may be familiar with them, some of them you may, some of them, uh, you may not be. Um, but ultimately, it's this kind of starting from the ground level up of how do you look at an image, especially, so in any sense, how do you look at an image is always difficult, but then how do you look at abstract art is another whole, another whole issue. So that's the, uh, that's the premise of, of, of what we're doing. Okay. Um, I will say, I, I think I mentioned to Wafa when she was saying, you know, untitled artworks. I, I kind of want to say that's the universe I live in because, again, people who have taken my classes know I don't give artists, I don't give names until the very end of the class, right? So I always think whatever image you're looking at, you should approach it not knowing. As soon as you find the title, as soon as you find a title, you kind of think of, oh, that's the key to get into it, which means you're not looking at the picture, which means you're missing a whole lot of things. Um, it's always interesting to look at the picture, look at the image, and then if there is a title, say, it's like, well, is that what we discovered? Is that not what we discovered? It's always an interesting process to go through. But I especially like it when there is no title, because then I don't have to you know, persuade you not to look at the label to, 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 to get going. So with that said, um, let's, uh, let's just get underway. I, I will say as well, um, it's a real privilege uh, to be doing this not on computer screens, right? So first of all, live, and second of all, to have paintings, to have the images here instead of slides, right? It's not that often that that happens in an art historian's universe, and even students, if you've done any kind of art, art history, you spend a lot of time looking at slides, right? But it's, this is a whole different ball game, as we'll, as we'll see. Okay, so I actually want to start off looking primarily at this image over here, at this painting over here. Uh, we'll look a little bit at that one, and sort of by comparison, just this one over here. Now, these are all well-known artists. I'm not going to say who they are, uh, well-known um, well paintings, uh, but we're just going to start off as though you know nothing. Okay, so um, the first way to start, I'm going to give you a, a kind of uh, a, a sort of like a toolkit, in a sense, about how to go about looking at, an, looking at a, an image if you don't know anything about it, if it's not saying anything to you specifically. Right? And the general sense is, look at the big picture first. Okay? So I think what's happening, if we're looking at this, probably what's happening as you're looking at this is your eye is automatically looking at this, right? And you're kind of not figuring anything else out about what's going on. But in fact, I want to ask you the other way around, right? So imagine that this isn't here, this section isn't here, and then tell me what 
Just and, and very basic description. So no interpretation, no it looks like anything, just very, very basic description. As I often say, as though you're describing this to a blind person. So what are we looking at? Pyramid. Too much interpretation. You have to forgive me. I don't mean to be impolite. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll see what I mean. Just even so you, you see you're already making making it into a thing. Right? Again, too much interpretation. The universe. No. That's actually closer to what I want, but no, no, no. So one of my, one of my students say something now. Like Sorry? Like green. Like green. That's exactly what I want. Exactly, right? And, and where is the light green? In the space. Actually, the space. It is the space. Yeah, absolutely. Don't put your hand up yet. Just, just shout out. Okay. All right. So imagine. So now, but this is difficult, right? Because what you're doing when you're looking at art, you're always trying to think. It's like what's going on, what's going on, and so you're interpreting. What I'm trying to say is just like before you get to interpretation, it's like learning to read. We have to get the alphabet before we learn what the words are. So this, in a sense, is what I'm asking you to do. Okay. So the there's this light. It's overall light green. Right. So that forms like that forms what in painting we'd call that the it's it's sort of monochromatic. But in terms of like a painting, it sort of forms like the background. yeah, it's like the background, right? So you kind of feel as though it's there, right? So the background is it's the kind of generic space. Let's call it space against which everything else happens. Okay. So I was right. Universe, uh, well, that's what I said. It's close. Classifying <laughs> whether it's green or blue. I mean, I see it more blue in someone else's. Yeah. Green. Absolutely. And, and that's part of it, right? Is it's a kind of indeterminate color, right? It's not, it's not yeah. bright and sharp, right? And, and all of those are factors that relate to what, the, what our ultimate interpretation will, will be. Okay. Um, and then. What's the next? Now, this is subtle, right? What's the next? Speckled. It's speckled. OK. So it's not plain. Don't know what that means yet, again. But something's sort of happening. Hazy. Can, and, and hazy, absolutely. Say a little bit more, hazy. Uh, I can see different shades of green, and that's why I thought of hazy. Yeah. It gets darker in certain corners, and then lighter in the center. Absolutely, absolutely, right? So, and, and you do feel as though you're not quite sure. sure. So it does feel hazy, as though there's something happening behind it. So I, I'd actually like you to read from the top down. It's graduating towards the yellowish tone, towards the lower surface. Right. It's more dense on the bottom. It's definitely more dense on the bottom over here. It's lighter right. on top. Lighter on top. But then, and again, without, any, without saying anything specific, as you're kind of coming down, so you're kind of moving down, you're kind of exploring the, the space, and you're kind of moving down, and then suddenly you come to an angle as a kind of interruption. And what more do you want to, how else do you? Something's happening. Yeah. Exactly. And then what, say a little bit more. So, so now, if there's a blind person and they're listening to this, they're a bit Confused. So, so describe that, what you called an interruption. Maybe it's some sort of something that's in motion, with a certain direction in a way. Okay, but before that, before that, so I just want to, can you see this over here? I just want to talk about that. It's so, a sharp angle. It's, it's, yeah. No, it's, a step, it's like a step from behind. Y yes. <laughs> um, but maybe something is covered. Already we're beginning to kind of it's interpret a little bit. It's like someone erased the haziness. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's layered on top. It's like it's layered on top. But the interesting thing about it is what shape is it? Triangle. It's angular. Yeah, it's angular. It's angular. Compared to the organic forms of uh, us, right? But I'm still, I'm not, I'm, it's, it's not triangular. It's a line. It's a lot. I said the geometric. Yes, no, no, it's geometrical. Uh, can you see? It's a line. No, look, look, look. It's a, it's a square, more or less a square. It's a rectangle, right? And so it feels like, it's a little bit hidden, but it feels like something is, 
So you were saying like, like the haziness has been erased yeah. as though something is emerging. Something's coming out of the haziness yeah. over here. Okay, I just want to stop here. We've been doing this for five minutes. Can you see that the painting looks completely different? Yes. Right, from when you started? Yeah. Right. This is, honestly, this is why I love art and this is why I do this. I just love that where you've been looking at it for 10 minutes, right? And then suddenly as we start talking about it, suddenly it literally changes in front of your eyes. Nothing changes, but everything changes, right? And we've just begun. So something kind of is beginning to emerge from this haziness over here. I mean, you were saying this is sort of human made, right? It's this rectangular thing. Whereas that really does, as you see this beginning to emerge, that really does look like a kind of a hazy space. And then, doesn't it feel as though it's kind of, it's tilted, right? As though you can imagine a few minutes ago it was, it was kind of flat, right? That's what this is doing. It's kind of like, whoop, it's just kind of coming up and emerging out of its background over here. Okay, and then moving down a little bit further, then we get to, and again, just don't interpret, just describe. Just the dot, the red dot, this is the one that I saw. Yeah, that really stands yeah, out, yeah. right? But, but before that, before that, if we're kind of coming down, so this kind of hazy thing, and then something comes, and then... There's motion. Yeah, there's motion. Something is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Like this uh, is from left to right. Which I read it also as from left to right, exactly. Yeah, but so, so that line is actually directing the whole view. So yeah, and then there's a lot of motion. Like there's this one, and then this one. The curve one. Mm -hmm. coming from the back. Exactly. So he's saying that, that R is actually, he's leading us to actually go to the point and then go back up. It's like he's making a circle inside of the geometric force. Hang on a second. <laughs> no, it's not to say it's wrong, it's just to say you're racing ahead. H hang on a second, okay. In terms of energy levels, if I can put it that way, right? So you've got this which is relatively calm, very flat, right? And then this is a little bit uh, picking up, something's, something's beginning to happen. And then, Chaos. boom, something big has happened. Okay. We don't know what it is yet, right? But this is the, so, so there's a kind of, this is the, the backbone of a story that's being told, right? And you can imagine, we're going to work out, I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know where the story is going, I don't exactly know what it is, but I know that there's a story. I, I really like what you said, something's happening, right? Not much is happening, something's happening. Whoa, something really happened over there. And they're both in the shape of each other, actually, the two things that are happening. That other thing in the background, I'm not sure if it's less significant. It's just that it's, it's already in the background. It's already in the background. These two, so now again, and just bearing in mind, we, we don't know anything yet, right? We don't know any details. We know quite a lot just from looking at this, not so often, as this over here, is that these two, as, as Roger is saying, these two are kind of cousins. Mm -hmm. They know each other, right? Same, fa <laughs> same family. Whereas this is intrusion. An intrusion. It's intruding. It's from somewhere else, right? So something else has happened. Can you see how, this, how, how the story is beginning to layer, is beginning to build, if we just slow down and look at it for a little while? All right, now let's, let's get into the, to the nitty gritty of that. Oh, just by the way, by the way, just compare that with this over here. Can you see that, by the way? In terms of stuff happening. <laughs> Same language. Similar language, absolutely. But can you see that this one, there's much more happening. Yeah. How can you separate the background from the action? In, in this painting, it's quite obvious. Yeah. But in this painting, my eyes would go to the yellow, and is the yellow the action? Or is it part of the background, and is, is it all just vibrant? Um, that's exactly the right kind of question. 
<laughs> can I say? Um, and I, I just want you to think about that for a second, all right? And, and we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that in a little while. But that's exactly the key to how you begin to work your way through a painting. That's exactly that kind of that kind of a question. Okay. So now, what's the as we're kind of looking at this? What's the distinctive thing? You actually mentioned it. You said over here there's a lot of chaos. Chaos. Aggressivity, actually. Sorry. Aggressivity. Uh, aggressivity. Um, before, before that interpretation? Emotion. Emotion. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I do have to say, we, you know, for years and years, whenever I talk about these kinds of things, as soon as I say the motion moves from left to right, there's always somebody who puts up their hand in the class and says, no, 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 I see it as going from right to left. All of which is always possible, right? <laughs> but, but just for the moment, just go with this one and then we can see you know, if we can flip it around. Um, what's the key indicator of motion here? So, how the stroke is, yeah? Well, I have, I have two different answers, can you see? The, 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 the same, the same the stroke. Right. But somebody else said. I said the line. Yes, I'm not sure which, somebody said a circle. Yes. yes. Worth right, circle. right. Yeah, yes, but, 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 but that, can I just say again, this is part of the discussion, right? Somebody says circle, somebody else says, well, it's not quite a circle. Okay. It's like, you need somebody to say circle for us to work out what the shape actually is. And in fact, this one seems to be like the dominant, the dominant form, in a sense. There's lots of other things going on, but it looks like this really sets the direction. It's the movement mm. going. Okay. And I have to pause and say, beautifully done, right? Can you also see, can you actually see how this is done? You can see the paint, the thickness of the paint, mm. right? You can also see that it's really sitting on top over here. And then, now I gotta say, you know, I've, I've been looking at this for weeks now, and it's only this morning that I felt that I really worked this out mm. as I was really looking at this. So we've got this stuff happening here. When you first look at it, it looks like chaos. But look a little bit more closely. So let's, let's call that, I'm going to call that the leading edge, right? So it's kind of like an edge, and you can see the motion. It looks like it's traveling quite quickly, right? And what's it, how can I phrase this? What's it doing? It's creating a movement, simple as that. Creating movement? Yeah. Where is the movement? Well, if you actually see how he make, how the artist mixed the colors, so that blue is not a singular blue, it actually mixed with the background. As the only thing that is not mixed is actually the black. He didn't work out the black tones, so that's, that's, the, that's the only thing that is distinctive. As for, even, like, even if you see that red spot, like next, really next to it there's a little spot of blue, which is the same blue that is uh, up there, right? So he's leading us to, to see this, this line, because that black is actually leading the way. Okay. Okay. Now, have a look at what looks like chaos, and see if you can see some different things going on over there. It's an outline. It's as if it's outlining the shape that's created by the black paint, like like it's holding it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So now I want you to <laughs> a thought experiment. Forget about the black for a second, and you'll see why. Um, okay. It's creating something that looks like a resting plane. Say again. Like a plane you can rest on. It looks like something you can hold. Rest on, yeah. Which which part? The that curve, the curvature with all the, mo the motion that came off going that way. Although I know you said before, yeah. right, but that thing creates like a resting plane for whatever the chaos that's happening there. I, I see it the opposite way. I think it's uh, the motion going from left to right is pushing the other thing to go down. So it's, it's that's why we have this arch because there's a motion from left to right, and the other thing is, is pushing. Uh, that's the interesting. I got to tell you, I hadn't thought of that. That's really interesting. Now, now what am I going to do? Hang on a second. Let's just think, let's just take this one through a second. Let's pretend you didn't say anything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk okay. <laughs> but yeah. what, so what you were effectively saying is this kind of arc over here seems to be 
pushing, and then this other stuff over here is kind of contained in it, mm. right? So that's, I think that's what you mean by resting in it, in a sense, right? Now, what's happening, if this is the arc, what's happening here? Yeah, go ahead. I think the, the object is moving from a state of motion to another, and the artist like wanted to capture this, the object moving from one state of being to another, if you want, like another corner on the canvas. So I, I think that's correct in, in some way, but again, I think you jumping ahead in terms of where I want to go. Can you see what I'm, when I'm saying, you understand what I'm saying when I'm saying you, you're jumping ahead, right? I just want to talk about, it's like, it's like talking about the spelling of the word. Is it spelled with a C or a K? Is it spelled with an, you know, A-E or E-A? I'm thinking of these tiny little things before we build them up into elements of meaning. That's what I'm, that's mm. what I'm trying to do. So maybe it's a, it's a new tone of blue that is not used up before. Yeah, yeah. Carry on. <laughs> okay, so now look at the look at the position of the brush strokes. Because you can you can see that these are individual brush strokes, right? So, yeah, now, so now look at the brush strokes here. They escaped from the Hang on a second, let's think. And in terms of order, order or it's like organizing chaos, you know? Now, is there, are there some that are more organized than others? Ones to the right. Yes. Can you see that? Can you see that? Right. So ahead of this, what, we're, what I'm saying is like a leading edge over here. That's actually relatively organized, right? Can you see it's sort of more or less, not 100%, not but more or less, whereas everything that comes behind is in chaos. It almost feels like that part is the point of, um, I want to say, um, the initiation or, okay, so if we're thinking about this in terms of layers, you have this, you have the skin, if you want to call it skin, the space, mm -hmm. and then we're talking about this object that's behind, that wants to be pushed out, and there's the first point of friction, but then the action is happening to the left of the line, where the motion is actually, and the action is actually happening, and sort of everything to the right is the aftermath. I, 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 I can't not say <laughs> no, no, but first of all, can I just say, hang on. Can I just say, that was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Right? It's like, can you, can, you, can you see the way it's all beginning to like work in your head? It's like, oh, now I'm beginning to string all the parts and together. Absolutely. Right? The, the red part, I'm sorry, the red part, red part was probably the first point of contact where it's bleeding, where everything is starting to bleed, but then the black part is when, yeah, the aftermath of it, in a way. Fantastic, fantastic. So Sorry. I agree with everything she said until we're talking about the motion going from the left to the right. Yes. It may look more chaotic than the, the part that's on the right of the uh, okay. arc, but they're actually, for me, I see them because they're, they're moving faster. So they which, look, which, which are moving faster? The blue. Um, these ones here. Yeah, yeah, because they're moving faster, they seem uh, like uh, clean strokes. Yes. And they're, they're actually, they're moving faster than the ones on the, on the left. They're not more calm and, you get what I mean? Yes, yes. Yeah. Especially as a technique, he had to do that. Yes. Because like, so, if you come to think yeah. about it, like the bottom part, he actually had to work that color to, to, complement, like, to complement these strokes. Yeah. So, so there's, there's just, you can feel there's more well, agitation in the brush yeah. strokes over here, right? It, it, like the agitation started on the left, and it's pushing uh, towards, the le towards the right, mm. and then something like fell out of balance, yeah. and it became uh, more a faster movement. So it's more chaotic. That's why it created this. Like, uh, it's, it's yes. faster. Y yeah. Yes. Now, so, so I'm saying yes, just in the sense it's like, I see what you're saying. Even more than that, this is the discussion to be had about this painting. Now we're talking about the painting properly. Okay. Right? Whether we agree, whether we disagree, we're all on the same page in the sense that now we're analyzing the distinctive elements and how they're interacting and what they're doing. Right? Yeah, go ahead. 
I think we need to, uh, to emphasize on the fact that that curvy line that he, uh, he created or the artist created was actually done the last because he needed that movement to be uh, uh, hyphened, you know? Because it, it's, it's, it's thick, actually, if you come to think about it, because all the painting is uh, done like with the light movements, because these are yeah. like layers of layers of a bosch. Well, you said, you know? so now this is really significant. I'm just going to say, mm. you can actually... It's like from down yeah, yes, from, from, but, but what's also really important mm. is the layers, the mm. layering, right? Because you can see which paint was put on first and which paint came afterwards, right? Exactly. And so what that actually means is the kind of physical process of putting on the paint translates into, and actually this is what I wanted to bring up, and in fact we've already been talking about it. Can you see that there is time in this image? It has to. It's, it's about time, right? We always tend to think it's like, oh, if you want time, you've got to go do video. But in fact, almost every painting we're going to be looking at, almost all good art, builds some notion of time into it. Something happened, something else happened, something else happened over here. Actually, let me ask you. Um, so we, we, we're kind of saying this is kind of chaotic, right? Whereas that's relatively clean, in a sense, right? But not totally agree, because, you know, he had to work it, you know? Like, this, uh, the difference between that part and the other is actually the cleanness of the color, the hue yeah. of the color, yeah. right? So I, I know, like, when he created that, what she called a pyramid, he yeah. actually had to put a little bit of that uh, red inside of it and lots of that white in the, in the middle mm. to create that, or else it would not be created, because he's using the same palette of the Renaissance when they used to create drapes. So yeah, no, 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 I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you right there. Yeah. Because, 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 I'll right. tell you, why am I going to stop you? Anybody else want to, anyone want to know why I'm going to stop I you? To because you're knowing. No. You're knowing. I know Talking about the Renaissance and drapes, you're not allowed to say that. No, you're I, I only to allowed to, to look at... your point. It's interesting, the first time point, someone says, don't show that you know. <laughs> See, when he did the ebosh uh, from yeah. the upper part, yeah. he had to do that because like, it takes seven layers. So this is how he is working. Well, well, no, 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 with all due respect, with all due respect, okay. the artist doesn't have to do anything. Well, he creates. No, no. Okay. But the artist, if the artist wants to put one thing on top of the other, or they want to put another thing underneath the other, they can do whatever they want. It's like, that's what a blank canvas exactly. means. That's right? amazing what you said. He, has, he did thicker paint over there. It just happened. I mean, I can assure you, he did not. Oh, no. Oh, it didn't just happen. I mean, it was... Every no, he went like that, and it just happened to be that, that section there is thicker than the top part. Uh, well, I, I'm reluctant to say just happened, because a good artist, yeah. everything is under control. There's nothing that's out of your control. That's the difference in some degree between a good artist and a bad artist, right? Mm -hmm. So if I can point to it and say, oh, that's thick, it's like, that's, you've got to assume that that's deliberate, mm -hmm. right? And what that also means, even forget about whether it's deliberate, you have to assume that it's significant. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you, have to, you have to assume that it relates to whatever everything else is happening inside the image. So, so I, I think it's, it, it's better just at this point if we forget about the artist. Let's forget about the artist. That's what I'm trying to say. It's just like see this as alphabet, an alphabet soup. That's what we're talking about here. Right? Actually, Rico, I have a yeah. question here. Uh, we were just speaking about the factor of chance when uh, uh, Hisham mm. said it just happened. Yeah. And we were told a lot about gestural movements and yeah. gestural, uh, gestural uh, uh, brush strokes. Yeah. I would assume that at times an artist would know each and every, or control each and every moment. But doesn't this a little bit call, like questioning whether everything was pre-calculated? I mean, there's a lot of uh, spontaneity in it. I mean, visually, we, we, there's so, some kind of a, a rupture that took place in Paris. So, so again, we're, we're, making a, we're, taking, we're making a little detour into knowledge. <laughs> I, no, I'm, I'm just Which is fine. That's okay. Trying to question whether yeah. there is the factor of chance when artists are working. No, I don't think uh, to become this good, there's no chance. There's I actually don't think. I, so, so now we will look at one or two other paintings today. Yeah. But with such a fantastic audience, I don't know how far. I don't. I don't know if we're going to even get to finish talking about this here, right? But this looks to me totally controlled. Right, everything, and but again, what's important about it is I'm not talking about the skill of the artist. I mean, the skill of the artist is great. I'm talking about it in terms of how we read the image, right? What those elements mean, 
Because if you can say, oh, it's random, it's like, oh, well, then it's not so significant. Let's forget about it. So that's what I'm trying to get at, is that everything is significant. But uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I still disagree with you. OK, there's a very big scope there. Yeah. And if you go a little bit up, then you hardly see the line. Exactly, so it's like, and that's yeah, what look, has. You, but with all due respect, with all due respect, you're not wrong. It's just that you're looking in the, you're looking in a place because you're, you're, you're so much thinking about the artist. Yeah. Right? And I want you to stop thinking about the artist. And I just want you to think about the picture. Yeah. Ah, okay, so okay. That's, that's what so I... Then we should consider the, the thick paint or... I don't know, because the thick paint, you will see, is really significant in relation to the meaning. Right. And this that's book specifically right. is obviously meditative uh, because it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, yeah. It's obviously deliberate because it shows the direction of all the what we were already seeing. Even if it's not there, you can see the direction of the yeah. second part, and it feels like it's adding to the direction we're already seeing. It's sure. putting emphasis on. It. Yeah, absolutely. It's obviously deliberate, and especially that there's another line exactly like it. But, uh, crossing the other angle of the square we talked about. Uh, which one? Over here? The square we talked about. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, if you take this angle, yeah. it's cutting one angle of the... Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's another one doing the same thing on the, on the bottom of the side. Uh, this one here or this one here? You're talking yeah, about? This, one. this one here. Yeah, absolutely. This is why we kind of read that as being one... I, I just... Go ahead, go ahead. First... Looking at it, it was a pyramid. Sure. So after we read into it, yeah. it looks like a square. And it go. looks like it's more in depth. Yes. Almost 3D. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Which at first sight right. was not. So right. it's talking. And, and, and it's evolving. It's evolving. And can I just say, all we've done is talk. Yeah. All we've done is talk about it. And this thing is going, it's just kind of yes. like shifting in front of your eyes. True. Right. That's what I... That's what I want to say. That's my lesson to, to this degree is like always talk about art. It's probably never a good idea to look at art by yourself, especially when you're beginning, okay. right? Because it's in the conversation that you begin to work out. It's like, no, and, and, and especially if you disagree with each other, right? It's like, oh, that's not right. Uh, but in it not being right, it leads you to what you think is the right part, right? And then, and then there's just this miraculous stuff happens, right? It all just begins to shift around in front of you. I just want to say, we, we're maybe halfway through. I've still got more to say. We've still got more to go. But hang on a second. Roger. Uh, I'm happy to say we're halfway through because I was wondering when will we get to the black part. Yeah, uh, yes, yes, exactly. Is, <laughs> we haven't got, we haven't even, we, we, you know, at the moment I'm still expecting you to not see the black part, right? I haven't, I, I haven't given I'm you permission to the see black the black part, part again. So. Right, right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, before getting to the black part, what I need, like, that little line, green line, that is actually holding the whole composition. Yeah, I love that. absolutely. It is. It's really beautiful. So is it fair to say, and again, just at this point, where we're just, just beginning to look at it, it's quite a beautiful painting. But this line is really fantastic, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely, it's, it's the backbone of the whole painting, right? right? Everything happens. So in a sense, this is the, it's almost like this is the verb in the sentence, if I can put it that way, right? This is the action. So, so this, this is, yeah, that's there. That sort of begins. And then, bang, this happens. this happens. And then everything else is a consequence of that. That's what I want to talk about, right? That's, that's where I want to go. Yeah, sorry, you were going to? Um, I have two questions, yeah. actually. Um, first one was, it was very interesting that we were talking about time, because mm. I was not able to decipher if is this picture um, trying to give me different um, pit stops on the impact that happened at once, or is it happening as you see it gradually? If, if it's con continuously happening. Yeah. So is it a moment, or is it six, seven moments mm -hmm. all compiled in different layers to give you one message? This is one. But then when we were talking about the circle that I was 
really unable to see. I was able to see motion, but it was not yeah. one circle. It was two huge circles right. dissected into two arcs. And this right. is why yeah, yeah. some of us can see it in this direction and yeah. others can see it in that direction it's because there are actually two big circles that yeah. are going right. in two, di yeah, in two yeah. directions and which gives you, if you have two circular motions going in different directions, it'll give you a sw swirl. So maybe that square that's actually a cube Yes. Moving in a swirling direction. Which is what you were getting at. Yep, absolutely. So actually, I, I have nothing to say in terms of what you said. It's like, that was fantastic again, right? Um, you, you're doing exactly. So I, I wait until we sort of get to the end. You'll feel when we're getting to the end. And then you'll have a better sense of. I kind of, I kind of want to. I want to say to you, whatever you said, is it this or that or that? I just want to say yes, right? It's, it's all of that together. But now, but it's not, it's not a vague, oh, it's all happening together. It's like structured. This is also one of the things that I'm trying to get across to you is we have this idea. Actually, I, I forgot this. I meant to say, um, I'm just going to take a little detour here, like five, three minutes of detour, right? So you're all here, which I assume you all like art to some degree. But almost always, you know, no matter where I am, I'm an art historian, people come up to me and they start talking. And if we talk about abstract art, if you don't like abstract art, what do you say about it? I could do it, or even worse, my child could do it. And then I do it, and, and you know, I, I think I've said this before, it's like, and I, you know, there's an elephant in Thailand somewhere that can, and I think there's a, I think there's a duck, there's a duck in India that can do it. It's like, you know, that, that's what people always say. Oh, it's so, and that paid what? They paid how much for this? You know, that kind of all goes along with it. Right? Um, so that's the one side. Right, which is if you don't like art, oh, it's it's easy. Anybody could do it, right? Yeah, you're just but flashing. but now, I've heard this so often. The argument against that, when people who love art come across people who say that, they have a counter argument, and their counter argument is if you like art, especially abstract art, you say, no, it's good because it. Structure. Actually, almost the opposite. They don't say that. They don't say that. They say it can mean anything. It means whatever you want it to mean. Right? And I'm also here, so obviously I don't agree with the, you know, with the bad thing, but I also don't agree with this, it can mean anything. It means very specifically, very precisely, because it's structured. That's what all of this means. It's, so it's deliberate, it's intentional, everything means something. It's telling you a story. We've already got half of the story. You haven't quite worked it out yet, but we've got half of it. But you can see that it doesn't mean whatever you want it to. It actually means something very specific. We may disagree, you know, and we may not reach a final, it's not like, oh, my dog went for a walk this morning. It's not that specific, right? But it's very deliberately structured to have a very particular meaning. So this is where we're going with it, right? So now I just want to talk about this, as we were saying, so this to me is this kind of like powerful, you know, First there was this, so this is the time element, right? First there was that, yeah. Then there was that, and then there was this bang, right? I see this, this is not what it is, I'm just saying how it appears to me. It looks to me a little bit like, you know when you have the scientific diagrams of like a sound wave or like an airplane going through the sound barrier or something like that, right? About the way shock waves work. This looks, that's why it looks to me like a leading edge of something. And then the, in terms of mood, if this is kind of like an emotional state, right? If you're in this particular emotional state, you're kind of feeling calm. Yeah, okay. Right. It's a nice blue. It's sort of relatively ordered, right? So in front of this kind of like horizon, call it an event horizon, right? Something is happening there. And in front of it, things are OK. But then behind it, things, it's, right? It, it feels after absorbing the, the, the fact of what happened, the real big thing that happened, like after becoming in a peace kind of, OK, it happened. Now I have to take a breath 
And he made the other blue there. Like well, hang, hang on a second. Can I, can I add something? Uh, it's not the technical. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the white stroke we're talking about the angle yeah. one. And, uh, how do you imagine how quick he do it? Yeah. Very quick. Yeah. yeah, it looks quick and that's relevant, yeah. right? Because it's, it's yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a sudden thing that It's a sudden it's a sudden thing that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Right? The, that's it. the same speed I imagine yeah. this whole part, uh, the black and everything on the right. Yeah. Yeah. Going, yeah, going the same speed as as the other one, as the stroke. This over here. No, that yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I don't see it calm and serene. I see it plunging. Yeah. Um, I'm going to add to that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Can I add to that? I yeah. I, I kind of felt, again, I'm coming from zero part knowledge, by the way. Perfect, right. Um, the strokes that are described as calm, yeah. I see them as standing. And the These strokes ones here. on the other edge of the yeah. line are falling. So in terms of action, yes. you feel like a falling uh, yes, action to in the this, left. Yes, in this thing over here. And then the standing. Yes. And Which, so I agree with that, right? So what, what I'm trying to get at is, um, is that the mood is different in front than it is behind. When, when the dust settles, you'll see that this really is reversible. right? And in, in, a, in almost all senses, in so many senses, Time is reversible. Time is almost always reversible, right? So we're, we're sort of talking about the same thing, right? You can just turn it. So this is where opposites, opposites are really the same in some sense because they share the same structure, right? To me, that if I'm, if I'm reading this emotionally, right, this reads to me as I'm feeling worse here than I am here, okay? If I'm saying these are descriptions of how I feel, right? then it seems to me that here I'm feeling better in the sense that I'm standing. Because it's more static. Because it's more static. So it seems to me that that's, you know, it's clearer and it's better ordered in a sense. This feels like this, this kind of turbulence that's coming over here, right? And most significantly now, right, I want to add in, now bring back the black. Well, it's not the motion, actually, come to think about it. It puts like a structure to the motion that he already created, the mood that he created. It, it gives it weight. Yes, exactly. It gives it weight. And, and can you dance. also see that if these are emotional states, right, and if each color is more or less a different subtle grading of an emotional state, right, can you see that this black is the last one in, yes. right? It's the last one in, yeah. sure. right? So if that means, so now, and again, just go with me if you, if, you, if you will allow me, right? So this thing happens, this arc happens. I read that as um, sort of pushing something ahead of it, which is kind of like, it's this divide, right? And I'm seeing that as, you know, relatively okay. And then I'm seeing this is that's the real, what we now call emotional baggage, right? That's all of the stuff stumbling and tumbling one thing on top of the other and not clear. And it's like, the, you know, it's like negative thoughts in your mind, right? So it's funny, it's funny even in popular psychology we talk about this. Good thoughts have this tendency to all string themselves up along nicely and kind of walk along in, in step together. Bad thoughts kind of come in and they're kind of tumbling over each other and they're, you know, they're, you can't sort them out. And it just seems that that's relatively, that, that gets at that notion quite nicely, right? Um, but the thing is, without the black, it's kind of like things, you know, things aren't so good, right? And then, and then, they got bad, right? That's the way I'm reading this, right? So, you know, one part of me, if you can put it there, one part of me is kind of like, yeah, okay, something happened, yeah, let me think about that, it's okay. And then another part of me is like, oh, that's not good. Oh, no, it's even worse than I realized, yeah. in a sense, right? And then, and then it fades away. You start to digest it. And, and you go out of it. 
you don't actually get back no, to where you were. It's changed you. Yeah. But right. all the colors, this is why it's <laughs> Yeah, but, but again, I, I don't want you to talk technique. It's fine, it's fine if you understand it that way. But this is why I just, you see, I'm <laughs> you, you see, it, it's about visuality and what visuality means, right? You can work that out in relation to technique. I'm not saying that's wrong. But first, I want you to just do this visually, just to see it, just purely visual. And now we're beginning to understand the story as it's unfolding, right? So does that all make sense, right? So I'm, so I, I'm reading this in emotional terms. I'm reading this as, it's a, it, this seems so true to me and to so many people that I know. If you would tell the story, right? Yeah, you know, okay. You know, I was, I was living in a bit of a haze. Um, and then something began to clarify. Not sure how I feel about it. I'm not feeling that different from how I was feeling before. And then suddenly, kabang, this bright, sharp, well-defined element, right? It's not, it's, it has force. If this, and, and one of the interesting ways to think about this is, imagine the opposite. If this was just a carefully painted line without that bumpy paint texture, it would have a completely different meaning, right? It wouldn't have the same force. It wouldn't have the same attack. It wouldn't have that same kind of like punch through. This tells you that it's got force and power, right? So that's why I'm saying it's not accidental. It's deliberate in that, in that sense. It's done beautifully, skillfully. Right? You can come back to the artist, who, the artist who just does this in like one stroke, but with just the right amount of paint on the brush. Not too little, not too much. So that it reads just like that, but still has these traces coming through. Right? So this thing happens, something like a lightning strike of some, something, which divides things. And one part is, you know, OK. Um, but then all of this other stuff, including that kind of momentary flash of this kind of dark, kind of something that sits on top of it, right? Um, and then it's sort of, it, it's funny, funny enough, it doesn't get better. It just fades away. It's not like it goes back to being ordered, right? It just sort of fades away and kind of loses relevance, right? Now, with that said, come to this just for a second. Yeah, exactly. So now this is what happens. I do just want to say, when you get so, when you sharpen your eyes, to such a degree, and that's what the exercise is, right? It's like, it's like sharpening pencils, sharpening your eyes, like, and then all of a sudden you look at this like whole different universe, whole different world, and it feels like, it's like a visual shock, in a sense that happens, right? Same artist. Mm. Same artist. Uh, same artist. And I actually will tell you now, it's funny, and this could be, it could be interesting the way we we, we think about this. Almost everybody who was talking about it in the beginning was saying he, 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 he. This is Yvette Ashar. Okay, it's a woman. Uh, you may know the name really well. Yes. Now, now, I'll tell you something. When I first saw these, just a little while ago, I was thinking it's like, I, I could see a lot happening here, but I wasn't quite sure what it was. Then I was thinking it's like, no, no, I'm going to talk about that. But then it was just two days ago that I thought, no, that's. This we were of, about to disregard that completely because, as yeah. you see, this is quite attractive. Because it's like, got such a powerful thing. And then I told Rico, no, we'd, we'd rather have that next to it. Let's keep it. Let's keep it, And yeah. just listening now to all of your comments and how you're analyzing it, it's quite interesting that I myself passed through that, and I know that I love that. I even prefer it to this one, I mean, visually yeah. or aesthetically. Yeah. But I never could, I mean, you know, like, unfold what's happening exactly. that deep until exactly. I just Unpack listen to all of you into here. This, this is quite thing. obvious for me that it's a rupture. It's like yes. a void. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. contrast between this yellow and the black is quite exactly. powerful. Right. But to walk your visual analysis through that one is even more challenging. Right. So actually, this one is, is more difficult to do in a sense. It means there's more happening. But once we've got this one, it's like, oh, that's easy. I know what that is now. You see, we don't have to do the work. Because we've already done the work over here. Although I, I did, you know, so I did have that same thought of, it's like this is the, the kind of zoom in, except it's not quite. You tell me why it's not quite. 
Yeah, can you see sort of that black thing there? It's like she's kind of zoomed in, but zoomed in in a slightly different way. Go ahead. This is layered on top of the... Yes. Here it's a hole. There's nothing... This is a hole. Somebody actually said that. This is a hole, right? And I, when I first saw this, when I first saw this painting, it, it was clear, right? It was like, oh, that's a chasm. That's just like a, that's like a tear. That's like a rupture in the canvas, right? So this is this kind of bottomless black pit, in a sense. Whereas that's not. That's kind of like, yeah, yeah, I'm not happy. But it just sits on top, right? It kind of kills everything underneath it, but it's not. Excuse me, like Rico, when, yeah. ha when we're having this feeling here, the factor of color is quite central. But when we went yeah. back there, I could hear most of us, or most of you, I mean, uh, referring to the calm, blue-green yeah. background, and then you came to the blue, how, how serene it feels. Yeah. But we never tackled the whiteness. I mean, we, we went into the forms and the gestures and, and yeah. you know, the rapidness, let's yes. say, or whatever, the compilation of those forms. In this case here, the color is telling us a lot. Yes. At the time we're over there, the form and, Yes, the and, form is actually know, is more significant. The, the circular movement is telling us a lot. I agree. So I actually think... Sorry, sorry. go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. On type of saying it's a zoom in, as if this... Okay, it's more deep, it's a hole, but this is what that thing... Uh, it was, it was like the, the consequences of what happened in the big deep in her, yes. in her like emotions until it, it became a whole. Because, you know, even the shades and the small red thing, yeah. you know, like the blue ones, it's coming out of the same mood. Like it was a little bit blue and then this, that, dark. Yes. Dark. Yeah, absolutely. So now I'll, I'll, I'll unpack this a little bit more, if I may, right? Which is, it seems to me, so this painting is boom, boom, right? It's in your face. It's, it's in your face, but it's also, the scope is from this kind of bright sort of reality, if I can call it that, to this hole that you suddenly fall into, right? So it's kind of like you're walking and suddenly, whoa, you tumble, you tumble, you tumble. This I see as being much more subtle. Yeah. It's like, right? Someone mentioned uh, something about uh, things happening at the same time, or maybe it's a different moment. Yes. Yeah. And this one, it feels like what's done is done. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like yeah, like, there's no coming back from yeah, this exactly. one. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. So this, and, and you know, I, I will say, it's quite difficult for us conceptually mm -hmm. to deal with subtle works. We're really good black, white, big, small, sweet, sour. Our brains just work really well. And you could even say in our modern times, I mean, talk about polarity, polarized you know, positions. We're, we're really good at that. Our brains work really well in that way. But a lot of art is, you know, it was, I wasn't feeling great, but it was OK. Then it kind of got worse. And then, oh, then it got, well, I didn't like it. And then, yeah, you know. So it's kind of in this middle zone. Right? And it's quite difficult for us to conceptualize that. And it's quite difficult for us to stay in that middle zone. Right? So, and, and that's what I really like about this. And you can see she herself, uh, Yvette, um, kind of, I can imagine that if she was kind of like, I mean, well, actually, let me ask you a question. Which do you think was done first? That one. Yeah. It turns out to be true. Yeah, it, it is. So this one was done in 95. This one was done in 2011. You see, you've all become art historians. This is what art historians do. It's like, let's work out the dates. And now you can tell. Yeah. I, I don't know. You can't assume that it's the same event that she's thinking of. This may have been something else, something worse, another something that happened. Right. So, yeah. How you mention anything about the page? And there's pretty significant the page. Yeah. 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 No, actually, I did mention a little bit, oh, yeah. but I, <laughs> were you paying when they, attention? When they said they died out, it just, yes, yeah, yes. Just but, died but, out. but but I do I do actually want to respond to the form of your question, which is like, this is a group discussion. You tell us about the beige. I mean, it's a layer. It's one of the first layers, I guess, she did before adding the others. Yes. So and then she just added the others. Yes. 
Yeah. So in fact, I, I, so this is interesting. So you're actually saying if we're going to if we're going to equate layers in terms of time and time in relation to our emotional state. Okay, that's partly what we're doing here, right? Is you saying that this is the very first layer? Yeah. No. Right. Yeah, I don't think uh, not very first, but from the beginning she started with the beige. Now you can't you can't say she you can't say she started. We're talking about no, not she nor he. You can only talk about you can only talk about the time in relation to the image. Yeah, I think I think the base color was was beige, and then it was and the other colors were added. So I, I think so I think in keeping with this notion of, of subtlety, I actually agree that I actually think that some of these tones here are underneath here. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Sure. So, <laughs> Sorry? I think it's quite the opposite. <laughs> Actually, Rico, listening to you, uh, yeah. I mean, your comments contrasting this to that, yeah. the clarity of this, the challengeness of that one. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm so familiar with all of those paintings, yeah. but I can't wait to listen to uh, the yeah. discussion on that, well, because this is hugely challenging. It's in between, I would say. Well, no, don't jump ahead. You, we have to we have to work but, out. But my eyes can't. Right, we have to work out where the alphabet is sitting. Like, how do you spell the words? Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Uh, Roger, go ahead. Uh, because so I asked about the black because, um, like, one minute after I sat in front of the painting, yeah. yes, I've been fixating uh, yeah. that form. Yeah. And I was waiting to see if you know anyone else like would bring it in. Uh, I don't know, but I feel like I I need to share it. Yeah. Uh, so. I see a feminine energy actually in the painting and I was, when you said, mm. when you gave more insight about the painter, it made all sense and I don't know if you see it, but there is a human figure there. The black for me is a human figure, which I, we are seeing the hands, the person is holding the head and the legs and I cannot not see it, like, I, can I show you? Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. This is the head, this is the body, and these are the hands. So which, which are the hands? Are these? This is the head, Yeah. this is the body, the legs, and these are the hands. And the person yeah. is following the curve right. yeah. of the end. It's talking about all that emotion, but... Yeah. And there's another one, mm. just like me, right? So, so, I, so I will say... Um, I'm, 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 I'm not going to say no, I'm not going to say yes, right? I am reluctant when you get these, it's a little bit like faces in clouds in a sense, right? You can, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. always find faces in clouds. Um, so I'm reluctant in these kinds of things. Um, I mean, you're seeing it. I cannot right. unsee it. And you can't it. unsee it. Unsee it but, yeah. but you see, that's also the way, I have to say, uh, it's also the way that figuration works. Because we're always, our eyes, our brains are always looking for things, yeah. right? Which is why people don't like abstract art, because it's refusing you that over here, right? And then it's very difficult, once you've seen it, it's difficult to unsee it. Um, uh, I, I, you know, yes, maybe, maybe um, but it doesn't really change. No. It doesn't change. It the doesn't change the, the same, actually. Which is, it's the same it's thing. It's that emotion, yes. Yeah. Exactly. The rest which exactly. you described is actually in, in line. Which means that, so now, and my students will be familiar with this when I say this, I often say, analyzing a painting, it's like, you know those jugglers, you know people who juggle? And you know those really flashy jugglers at Las Vegas when they throw not just three balls in the air, they throw like 20 balls in the air. And then as time goes along, you know, as we're analyzing, and it's like all the balls are up in the air. It's like, what about this? What about that? And the balls go up in there. And then as you begin to get to the sense of what the painting is about, and suddenly the balls come, do, 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 do. And they suddenly all come together, in a sense. And that's like, oh, now we've got the painting. Now we know what the painting is about, in a sense, right? And you can feel that as it's happening, as you're beginning to, as the various elements begin to kind of come together over here. Now, I just want to say, the one thing we didn't talk about um, but which is no doubt extremely important, but I, I honestly, you know, you tell me, um, is that red over there? How are you...? Well, he had, she had to put it, because it's contrasting. So he, she needs to stop the viewer, the eye, on one point, to actually emphasize on the motion. And there's one thing that I didn't mention, that is actually, 
the game of the light that's hitting that uh, big part mm. is creating a light where, where in fact she's using very uh, so earthy tones. Yes. Yeah. This is like. Well, it's she's a, interesting in the light, so that's creating light out of nothing. Basically, yeah. just one light. Is yeah. it the day of the light outside the yes, and and exactly, and it's making a little shadow over here. Exactly. Yeah. So but it's exactly. you know, and I've looked at this in all different kinds of lighting. It makes a difference, but it's still there. It's still you can still read it as that kind of bump over there. We could we could attempt it to yeah. fixate on that part and on the red. It's like literally the wood painting, this very monochrome green. Yes. Yes. You know, telling you that it doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. You know, even yes. if, even that space that is underneath is. Is, is actually holding that figure, you know, that yeah. or, or, or emotion. Yeah. And the red is there to tell you this is where you need to look, you know, and this is... Yes. No, no, carry on, carry on, carry on, I'm stopping this you, is, yes. This is what led me into more fixating that part and starting... So now with that, and I, I was kind of, I was, this was coming, coming in and out of my mind uh, this morning as I was looking at this. It's kind of like all of this, it's like, doesn't really matter, Except, and you know, well, that's not nice, but it's kind of like, oh, but that hurts, mm -hmm. right? That's the one, it's like a punctum, right? It's this like thing, it's like, ouch, yeah, okay. It doesn't always stay, but there's just, there's one thing that pierces, and then it comes through, but then it doesn't have any other consequences. It kind of stays there, which is part of what means, which makes it not that bad. It's like that one thought, it was like, ouch. Yeah, got to get rid of that one, right? And then it becomes everything else over here. Um, I'm just looking at the time. Yeah, we... we Is it time we, to we, take a break? We, uh, we'll yeah. have some coffee juices and drinks and a, a bite. And you can toot around, stretch your legs. Wayne, hi there, you're amazing.